What I wanted to say is that I feel obliged after all these years to introduce myself a little bit to people because I've been around a long time and all the people I knew 30, 40, 50 years ago have tended to go. Um, the first question is, how would I like to be remembered? Well, I was involved with the, um, the recreation of our local village mummers. Um, we done, went out in 1962 in the current revival, having performed last 1939 with the, uh, um, as our King George was the, um, the King George of the previous side and so on. Um, oh, why, why I put it up is to say, I was never the leader. I was not responsible for this lot in any way whatsoever, despite what people say. I was asked to play because the musician uh, died before they got going again. And our first aging was just for um, the local residents association Christmas party. They were one of the few Mama's plays in which Father Christmas gets killed. And this actually upset all the children. Because <laughs> they, they can see their Christmas present disappearing. But being involved at things at the local level is how I see the Morris. Morris and the folk customs are for local people, by local people, on the whole. The other thing I should be remembered for, <laughs> that's... Seven of them? Yeah. yeah. If I say the eldest is 56 and the youngest is 42, <laughs> you know, it's so on there. I grew a beard because in 1967 I was made responsible for a section in which I was the youngest member at the RE. I said I've been around a long time, haven't I? I should be 18, two months' time. I would then have done um, 60 years of Morris, 49 years of teaching. I taught, first taught at Hallsway in 1963. Although I stopped regular dancing in 72, I've been playing since. But I have a long history of ill health leading up to my current state. I have a feeling we're a bit too far away. Can we move it? Ah. Oh, that's the other solution. <laughs> yeah. Right. What started me off was attending, going up to the Vaughan with the library for um, some Morris event and looking in the library and seeing the helm index to Sharp's manuscript. Sharp's manuscript was on microfilm. It, it was a well, manuscript at Clare College had been microfilm. And I was able to borrow that for the, the good services of Douglas Kennedy. In fact, it's one of the benefits of the cancellation of Blue Street that I actually had two years with very little to do at Farnborough other than use a microfilm reader and walk my way through the manuscript, and so on. The other thing that came up is that the Cesar Sharp's field notes were deposited by Maud Carpenter's in the library for a while, and they were circulated around a number of, of um, historians, of which I was about number three or four on the list, and so on. I was able, therefore, to get a, a very good there. But in parallel, I went around to talk to all the collectors, Clive Carey, I mean, most of them had been dead for some years now, but Clive Carey had worked with Mary Neal, and he was a very fine musician, um, opera singer, um, then produced uh, plays and operas in London um, between the wars. Douglas Kenny had, of course, uh, followed Sharp as director. Maud Carpenter was a secretary to Sharp for many years. Ken Willis Schofield, Professor Ken Willis Schofield, um, had been a, a key person connecting with the Travelling Morris. Rolf Gardner, who, who is condemned nowadays as being a semi-fascist, but I knew him quite well, visited him several times. Um, 
He was anything but. He was a man who hated what Hitler did to the Germans. He did his best to restore relationship between um, Britain and Germany after the war. Um, and his idea of getting people back to roots meant that he bought, his uncle bought him a farm in Dorset, at Font Magna. Magna. Um, he ran it as a green thing. They grew all his own timber, do everything, uh, everything in other words, as you would today, except he was 50 years ahead of, of the idea of green things. Reverend Fox went on the first Travelling Mowers tour. Tommy Atkins was, went on the Travelling Mowers tours, which went to visit um, all the old dancers. Fred Hamer, of course. Major Fryer, um, who um, was an interesting character, to say the least of it. He was a major before the First World War started. He had trained at Farnborough on Cody's kites. Had a notebook all about how to fly a kite, man-carrying kite and so on. Um, on his first flight during the war, they got caught lost in fog, landed in Holland. He never fought another stroke in the war. So at 40, in 1930, he retired um, as a major still, um, and then discovered Morris dancing. Um, he really was a key in getting um, Ainsham, Abingdon, and so on, reactivated. Russell worked at the Vaughan Williams Library and so on seeing people. In parallel, the important bit was watching. Got to watching Bampton over an extended period of years. Um, filming. I've got, as you said, 75 hours of city, 75 hours of video archive. It will all be donated to the, um, the Wessex Film and the Saint Archive at Winchester, me being a Hampshire man. Stave, yes, stave it. Um, some of the things for filming of stave dance is done by Bath City. We tried a lot of things out with Bath City. Um, Marguerite ran the Abercorn stave dances. For, that's a fascinating period to, to talk about as well. Um, Dorset Knobs and Knockers, uh, mixed sex team, of course. Um, and that led me to study stave heads and read the accounts. And we had a workshop at Sparkford. Not just collectors, but there are a surprising number of old dancers still available to go and talk to. A complete set, of course, at Abingdon. But at Ascot, um, there had been under Tiddy a revival, well, a, revival um, a boy's side. Um, but it was sort of mixed because Several of the women we talked to could do the dances as well. Old dancers at Bampton, three dancers at Bidford, three, three dancers and a daughter, yeah. Chipping Camden and so on. These are people and have a chance to talk to. Them. And the result of all this chatting and the clearly was to increase the uh, published repertoire from 80 dancers to 350 in the Black Book. I've been running instructions for a long time. I don't suppose anybody remembers any of the Hallsway Manor ones there. Or for that matter, the boys' tent at St. Athlon. Those who ever actually went on to St. Athlon and actually danced wearing um, anoraks and so on in this gym about the size of this, but bloody cold. <laughs> yes, something to be remembered. Um, Morris Federation, when it started, had workshops in various places, but we settled on Nains Barn at Wandage. And of course, when Border got picked up, and I know when Border started, because the weekend my youngest son was born, um, I was due to run in the structure at Lidbury with Tubby, and we did. But Margaret had started contractions before we left. And we left at one, and we got to Lidbury at three. And one of my sons stepped backwards through the French door windows. It was quite amusing, really. <laughs> so. Publications. Not a great deal. The Country Dance Society of America, thanks to Tony Barron, published sets of notes in five volumes. Um, they were available to purchase, in this, well, you could buy them from the States in this country. Few people bothered to, um, and that suited me anyhow. Most of the time, notes were distributed at workshops, um, and that was all. Um, 
a typical booklet, which I did do for a workshop, it looks like that. They have that sort of pattern, and those are the ones there. Some of those days are notable. The dances for three to five was in North London, the day of the poll tax riots. I had to cross London. Um, I got onto the North Circular, and my transmission broke. So I was towed all the way back home. Then I had to make my way by public transport through the riots in the centre of London. It was not very funny, really. There were people smashing windows and throwing um, lighted torches into windows and so on. So, but by now I'm afraid of it. Made up dancing on television. Over the years, there's been a number of television dancers. And I recorded those for the sake of knowing what the world at large knows of. But, of course, I'm what really a professional um, career, not just a Morris man. Uh, my professional career was a rocket scientist, one of those mythical characters of which we never had many in this country. And that's the sort of list of things that I was involved in over the years. As a result, it brings its rewards. I became a principal consultant which, believe it or not, means that uh, nobody ever consulted me. I just got on and did what I wanted to do. <laughs> I got paid a lot for it. A lot for the time, but nothing could better what bankers get, I tell you that. It got me the silver medal for the Royal Air Society and the CBE. Undeserved, in my opinion, but that was it. The Morris Federation was good enough to recommend me for a gold medal. And thanks to the Morris Federation, I own my previous medal, which is the gold medal of the FTSS. Now, what we're going to do tomorrow is I've got helpers tomorrow as well. But we've got um, Bessels Lee and Juniper Hill to have a go at. We've got assistance from Sheffield and... Now, come on, what's the Raglan Tate? Right, yeah, yeah. So we'll have a busy day tomorrow, right? Um, but the delight for Sunday is going to be the Welsh Morris. The, you have to believe it, but um, many years ago, a Welsh woman who lived near Nangaru um, went to the Nangaru Festival and could remember what she saw. And she told her daughter in Welsh, the notation, what she remembered of the dancers. Now, this being all the Welsh have got, they've had to work on these to actually create dances from them. And I have a, a note, the notation I have of the dancer starts with her original notation and how it's been improved and improved and improved until I give you the last version that Cardiff did, which they made me dance it on at a cold chip <laughs> somewhere near... Um, Swansea. So that, that will be Sundays. But that will keep you fairly busy, I hope, for the rest of the weekend. Now it's 10 o'clock, I would say, which means, unfortunately for me, my bedtime. But I see you all. It's sensible time tomorrow. I will get going again. Thank you very much.